Stop. So the story goes. I figured out what these uh, clips are. <laughs> Part of Jesus and lithium. Um, <clears throat> hang on just a sec. Pixies, it's called Where Is My Mind. It's on the Fight Club soundtrack. Where Is My Mind? Okay, so basically, um, what ended up happening was I got catheterized by this whore of a bitch. <laughs> bitch of a whore. Uh, I can't say that because I just this week forgave her. I've been working on the last person to forgive, and it's her. She came in and catheterized me so hard I ended up getting an infection. I couldn't walk for days, which nobody really cared about because what subsequently happened, they threw me in it. This was over Yom Kippur. I always know this because um, not a lot of people understand that holiday, but when you link it to what happened to me, it makes biblical sense as uh, being a disciple or an apostle or a prophet or whatever. So basically I um, was thrown in this like drunk tank. It's a dirty floor with a mattress about yay thick. No pillows, no nothing, just a camera on you. And I had been asking people at these pivotal moments of, you know, being transferred from these cops to this cop, from this cop to the hospital, from, you know, this area to the, um, cause they didn't have a psych area. And what hospitals used to have was a way that you could triage a person to make absolute certain that they needed to get some psychiatric help or, you know, is it something that we can let this person go, you know, so long as they have, um, you know, the, uh, the, the lucidity enough to understand what's going on. Now, see what happened to me was because of everything compounded and being moved from this way to that, I was basically catatonic by the time they got me to the hospital. The only time I um, ever really emphatically made a statement was about the nurse and catheterizing me. And so, you know, nobody will tell me what's going on. Nobody would tell me what was going on. And it started to drive me crazy. And I kept saying, you know, they're like, do you know, at one point, I think one of them said, do you, the MHP said, do you know why you're here? And I was like, yeah, evidently it's this big test from God to see if I can get along with everyone. And now that I've passed it, I think I want to go home. And those were grounds to detain me. Some things that flew out of my mouth weren't even my words, but the Bible talks very specifically about when you are thrown in front of kings and judges. I will give you the words to speak and not one hair on your head will, you know, perish. And I'm going through this and I'm thinking the whole time this is going on, I'm thinking my mom's punking me. Because my mom and I at that point <coughs> in time were pulling these big prank jokes. I was up in Seattle and my mom had a, one of her friends call and pretend to be an officer that my apartment had gotten broken into and, and that my cat was okay, but like all my stuff was gone and it was my mom. And so I figured if she could, you know, go to that extreme to freak me out, I, I could not in my mind figure out why I was there. There was no justification for why I was being handled this way other than what God had said. God laid the foundation for everything that was going to happen in the next almost decade with me. In these moments, in these dire moments, when the decision-making process of certain things, I knew I had to go. It's just like Jesus knew he was going to get crucified. He knew it. He just had to figure out how in the hell it was all going to go down. And many times he asked, is there another way? Many times he said, this cup is too much for me to bear. Many times, many times. He was terrified. And so it was at the very beginning of me getting picked up by these officers that I started to go through the Jesus experience and realize that I have the Jesus gene. Somehow we are related. For a long, long, long time. 
uh, you know, I couldn't live it down. They put me in this, you know, psych ward on a 72-hour hold, but the thing that you have to know is that if you go in on a Friday, the weekends don't count. The weekends don't count, so I was there for five days, and my parents came down, and, you know, nobody could figure out how in the hell I ended up there, you know? And I was, I was, woo, I was so gone, and they didn't even medicate me at all. They didn't diagnose me with bipolarity. The doctor said she suffers from flight of ideas. She appears much younger than her stated age. She's inappropriately bright. And she is positive but not euphoric about her future. And they let me go. And they let me go. And I'm banging on the doors to say, hey, why did you take me? What the hell's going on? So I had to call my boss. <clears throat> I stayed in a hotel for about three days to try to recover from this horrible catheterization that had taken place. And I was just pissed. I was so, you know, I was pissed at my ex-fiance because I thought, you know, somehow he had something to do with it. And I called the optometrist. And I'm like, you know, what in the hell did you guys say? Well, I had to drive home and get the 911 reports and the medical records to figure it all out because I started getting all these bills for thousands of dollars from the hospitals and it falls under the Involuntary Treatment Act. So if you ever get detained and you go through all this rigmarole that they put you through, don't, don't pay a single hospital bill. You don't have to pay for that stuff. They have to pay for it because the state is the one who these people that work for the state of Washington and it's called the RCW 71.05.700 law look it up and I'm saying look it up because people in your life are going to deal with the exact same thing that I did the closer that Jesus gets and the closer that the Antichrist and his you know rah, he's gonna like during Satan can't take over or do anything until the rapture happens. The rapture happens, the tribulation happens, and then yada yada. Ten million years from now? Nobody has a clue. It's not even in the Bible. Something about words not passing away and you will come and be with me and my kingdom and this and that and we'll rule forever and da 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 da. Okay, great. Not a lot of people knows what happened, you know, what, what what's the hell situation in ten million years? Does it ever change? There are some things that we just do not know. But one thing that I can say is that this put me on a track to where I was, uh, I ended up being strategically aligned with Jesus after Christmas of that year. So basically I had come home, I got my life back together somehow, I was working my way through, you know, these terrible nightmares and this horrible PTSD that I wasn't getting treated for or, you know, getting any help with. I was having night tears. I was having day tears every day. It was horrible for me. Um, there was still this this uh, unresolved pain that was going on. Uh, what that nurse did to me was pretty much the equivalent of se almost severing a, a clitoris off. And even though there's no, I've had gynos say, you know, you don't have anything that's misshapen except this, you know, this one tear that happened and with you moving and everything. So I got that cosmetically fixed. And so anyway, um, I am out in Spokane and I'm doing my deal. And then from September 21st or whatever on through Thanksgiving and all of this, I was living my life trying to get things put back together again. And, um, and then the most fascinating thing happened to me. And I will share that with you in the next segment. So thanks for tuning in to segment three. I uh, hope to see you at segment four.